Greetings, friends, and welcome to a Dragon Staff Buyer's Guide. So when I first decided to try getting a Dragon Staff, I had never touched a Dragon Staff. I didn't know anybody with a Dragon Staff or any flow prop. And if you've already looked online, you've probably seen that there are a lot of options out there. So with this video, I was hoping to help anybody who might be in a similar boat as me, who is in the market for a Dragon Staff, this video will help you to know exactly or more of what you're looking for. Before getting started, I just want to mention that I am not sponsored or affiliated with any Dragon Staff manufacturers or prop making companies. These are just my opinions from what I've gathered from trying these different Dragon Staffs. Now almost seven years into spinning Dragon Staff and becoming completely obsessed with it, I have been very fortunate enough to try most of the Dragon Staffs that are out there, either by owning them or by trying them at a festival or a fire jam or a flow jam. So in this video, we're going to cover everything, including the size of the staff, the width of the staff, the heads of the staff, the weight of the staff, whether you want a fire staff or a practice staff, some of the different grip options that are available, We'll also compare aluminum staffs versus carbon fiber. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give a review for most of the major Dragon Staff manufacturers out there. So what makes up a Dragon Staff? First off, you have the shaft. Oftentimes, folks will have a grip over the shaft. There are also the spokes at the ends here or if you're using a practice staff, maybe you have some kind of fun design instead of spokes, maybe a wheel or something like that. And then you also have the wicks if you have a fire staff. In this video, I'm not going to really get into LED dragon staffs because I feel like that's a whole nother video on its own. So that will mean I'm not going to be talking about companies like Flow Toys, I'm also not going to be talking about Main Flow on Fire, who also makes Dragon Staffs, mainly because I've never gotten to try their Dragon Staff. And I'm also not going to be talking about any wheelie, circular ended Dragon Staffs, just because personally, I don't have any and I've never tried any. I am not very much interested in them. So of course, this is going to be a bit of a biased video as any review is. So if you are considering getting your very first Dragon Staff, you might be asking yourself, should I get a Fire Dragon Staff or a Practice Dragon Staff? By Practice Dragon Staff, I mean a staff with these types of heads on them, something that isn't um, wicks like this, more something that is designed to use during the daytime or without LEDs or fire. Unfortunately, these heads from Raised in Flames are no longer on the market and they are my favorite daytime non-fire Dragon Staff heads that I've used. These paw print shuriken heads are available at Gora's website, G-O-R-A. And really, this question comes down to finances, unfortunately. Um, if you are tight on cash, which I can definitely understand and is definitely where I was when I got my first Dragon Staff, then I would recommend just going straight for a Fire Dragon Staff. This was my very first staff. You're also able to unscrew the wicks and then it's just a contact staff because I really had no idea if I was going to like this thing or if I was gonna be into this or if I would just drop it after a week and not care about it. So I didn't want to invest too much money into it. So I definitely went with a cheaper option and I just wanted to get a fire staff. That way, if I did like it and ended up wanting to light it on fire, I would already have a fire dragon staff. However, because I spun dragon staff for about 14 months before ever lighting one on fire, I put this thing through quite a beating, as you can probably tell by my messed up uh, spokes there. And that, would have not happened if I had just gotten a practice staff like this one from the beginning. So if I could go back in time, I would have gotten a practice staff first and then purchased a fire dragon staff when I was ready to light a dragon staff on fire. But like I said, um, if you aren't 
sure if you're gonna like the prop or if you don't want to fork out the cash for another fire staff down the road because these are expensive props, then I would recommend just getting a fire staff right off the bat. So if you are considering getting a practice staff or a daytime or non-fire dragon staff, some of the heads that are available to you are, as I mentioned, the paw print shuriken heads are available on Gora's website. That's G-O-R-A. Flobonacci also has some really nice non-fire dragon staff heads available. And the other main one that I'm aware of is Three Worlds offers the Dragon Claws, which are pretty similar to this. I think they were also originally made by Raised in Flames. I hope I'm not wrong about that. Only instead of how these heads just slide on and off like so, the Spiral Claws have a little device that they lock into and then the device will slide onto the Dragon Staff and then screw on tight. So a little bit different. I have heard that they're a little heavy. I have not tried the Dragon Spiral Claws personally to know, but they definitely give the most similar look to the Spiral Heads. And if you are going with the Fire Dragon Staff, you are probably wondering how many wicks that you're going to want because you can get a Dragon Staff with three wicks on each side. You can get a Dragon Staff with four wicks on each side. You can get a Dragon Staff with five wicks on each side. And I believe Dark Monk also offers a Dragon Staff with six wicks on each side. So this is definitely going to come down to personal preference. Um, as you could tell, when I got my first staff, my thinking was more fire, more better. So I wanted 10 wicks total, five on each side, big one on the ends. Um, you may have noticed none of my other dragon staffs have that many wicks and none of them have this center wick. Uh, this is kind of a personal opinion or decision I just found that this big center wick kind of takes away from the roll of the other wicks. With a staff like this, if you are spinning it on fire, at least if you're spinning it slow enough, you can see each individual wick rotating in a circle. And with these giant wicks on the ends, there's this always constant flame in the center, which is just static and it's not rolling like the other wicks. And because it tends to be a much larger wick than these other ones, I found that it made it even more difficult to see each individual spoke rolling on fire. Um, this flame tended to just get really big. And then especially in videos and stuff, you couldn't even see the top wicks really. You could just kind of see the bottom wicks rolling underneath. And I found that the giant wick on the end just kind of took away from the look of the spokes rolling on fire on a dragon staff. Additionally, I started going from four wicks on each end to three wicks on each end because I guess uh, more fire, not more better always. And you don't really notice more wicks once the dragon staff is rotating. However, each wick is going to add more weight to your dragon staff. And for me, especially with a fire dragon staff, I didn't need any additional weight on there. So I started going with the three wicks on each side. Of course, this all comes down to personal preference. These are just what I have found over the years. So one of the most common questions when someone is asking about getting a dragon staff for the first time is what size should it be? And the most common answer is about chin height. So hopefully I'm in the shot enough for you to be able to see here. This dragon staff is probably a little bit higher than chin height for me, and this is my preferred size dragon staff. However, I do have another dragon staff that is a little bit higher than chin height. This one is maybe up to my eyebrows or almost as tall as me. And I like this size dragon staff too for a lot of different reasons. Um, the different size makes different things 
e more easy or more difficult and with the bigger dragon staff it just felt like it slowed everything down a bit for me which was very helpful in the beginning. So it's tough to know from the beginning what size you'll want your staff to be, but my general recommendation is somewhere between your chin and eyebrows. Another important thing to pay attention to when you are purchasing a dragon staff is the width of the dragon staff. And what I mean by that is the width of the shaft here, this little circular guy, they come in different widths, which I did not realize at the time. So this being my first dragon staff, eventually I ordered these raised in flame heads and I thought that I would just be able to pop them right onto this staff, which I don't know why I thought that because obviously it has a wick at the end here, which is screwed in. I don't know if you can tell because they're all covered in soot. So. As soon as it came in the mail, I was pretty bummed out that I couldn't just pop this wick off and slide the spiral heads on top. So then I unscrewed the wick and detached it from the staff and attempted to put the spiral heads on the staff only to find out that the width of the staff was too wide for these heads. So you'll just wanna pay attention of the width of the staff that you get and if you're considering um, interchangeable heads or LED heads or anything like that, you might want to eye what width those heads are before you get your first dragon staff just so that everything is very easily interchangeable. So there are two major materials used to make the shafts of the dragon staff. The original is aluminum and that's what my first dragon staff is. Afterwards, carbon fiber became very popular, which is what the rest of my dragon staffs are. Um, as you can tell, I said the rest of my dragon staffs are carbon fiber, so obviously this is preferred to me. It is very durable. These things can take a beating. They seem almost indestructible, and they are much lighter than aluminum. So it has been said throughout the community that carbon fiber is the new aluminum. So. If you have the option, I definitely recommend carbon fiber, although of course usually aluminum is a little bit cheaper if you are going with something more friendly to your bank account because like I said, this is a very expensive prop, especially if you've never tried one or aren't even sure if you're going to like it. So another thing that I mentioned here is the weight of the staff and that can also be an important detail when looking into a dragon staff. It's definitely going to come down to personal preference. Some people like a really light dragon staff, they can get moving really fast. Some people find that it makes it move too fast and uh, harder to control. Some people like a really heavy staff. Personally, uh, I'm like Goldilocks and I like it somewhere right in the middle there. I believe Trick Concepts does offer weights that you can add to your dragon staff. So I guess you can always make your dragon staff heavier or even adding things like uh, flowers on the end, which look like this. I got these from Ninja Pirate, like little tassels. And um, I usually just use them on the ends of my contact staff, but things like this and um, the weights from Trick Concepts can add some weight to your staff if you do find that it's too light, where if you get a really heavy staff, you're kind of stuck with that. There isn't too much you can do to make the staff lighter. So I don't have an ideal weight of a staff for you. Um, it's just something that you'll have to play with and find out for yourself. But my recommendation is to go with a carbon fiber staff because they are lighter and you can always get heavier dragon staff heads or add flowers or weights if you want more weight on it. So another thing that I wanted to talk about, something that I did not really notice or pay attention to when first buying a dragon staff, but something that really matters a lot to me now is the different types of head attachments and what i mean by that is the different ways that these wicks are going to connect onto your staff because they are not all the same this was my very first dragon staff and these wicks simply screw right into the staff hopefully you can see that there little holes that go around and you can self screw them in. Um, 
Also, as you may have noticed with this staff, is there are these bendy spines that I also am not too much of a fan of. You can see I'm struggling to screw this in here. And um, over time, I don't know if it's just from so much use or lighting it on fire or dropping it, some of them don't screw in easily. One of the screws on this staff um, doesn't ever fully go in. And again, I don't know if that's from my constant use or dropping it or what. So that's why I'm not always a big fan of heads that you have to screw in. And then as I started to say there, these bendy spines are also something I'm not crazy about because of course, the more you drop it, the more messed up they're going to look. So they aren't exactly symmetrical anymore, which I suppose you could try to bend them back, but um, it's just tedious and not something that I really like to do. So I do recommend a lot of Dragon Staff makers now offer um, aluminum or steel or like solid heads like this that won't bend and they definitely can take a beating. They're very durable and they stay symmetrical, which I love. And another thing about the different types of heads out there there are um, some prop makers that still use this design where you can screw them right in. Uh, other ones, a lot of companies have switched to designs where the entire head is screwed on to the staff. So basically, you can unscrew the head off of the staff. Oh, this is the messed up side, which I will get into in a moment. And a lot of Dragon Staff makers now offer uh, fire heads and practice heads that attach to the staff like this. I'd say it's probably the most common device used for attaching heads to a Dragon Staff these days. So as you can see, this one is an Allen wrench, not all of them are an Allen wrench, but you'll unscrew the head, which will loosen it. And then you can slide the head off of the staff. So like I said, um, you can get fire heads or practice heads that will slide onto your staff this way. You simply loosen the screw or bolt, then push the heads onto the staff and then tighten them on there so that they stay on there. So I am personally, uh, I'm okay with this device for Dragon Staff heads. I'm not a huge fan of it. It works, but it's definitely not perfect. Um, sometimes through use or through dropping the staff or whatever the case is, they can become loose and they can come off. So anytime I'm performing and I'm using uh, Dragon Staff heads that screw on or screw in in this case, before every burn, I make sure that everything is screwed in tight, which is just a little bit tedious. Um, and then as you saw there, this side is a little bit messed up. Um, I don't know what this piece is called. I'm not a tool guy. Is it called a nut? I want to call it a nut. Basically the piece that the screw or bolt screws into to tighten became lopsided. So it does not tighten in to that little piece there anymore. And I don't know if that's on the manufacturer's end or again, if it's just from my constant use and dropping the staff and throwing the staff and kicking the staff. Or I've also read that you're not supposed to overly tighten them because that can strip it or cause it to not tighten anymore. Whatever the case is, like I said, it's not a perfect design. It is the most common design and for most people it works. Um, I just don't like that. I was at a fire jam once and I saw somebody using a fire dragon staff head that screws onto the staff and I'm guessing they didn't tighten it before or maybe it was broken. I don't know. But the whole head of the staff went flying off of the staff and towards the audience on fire. And uh, I guess I just love Dragon Staff so much that I don't want it to be a prop where people watching have to 
fear that the head of the staff is going to come flying off of the staff and towards them while someone's performing for them, um, which is a thing that I've seen happen multiple times with poi spinners, um, including poi on fire, one time which landed on my hat and lit the whole top of the hat on fire. So uh, I just don't think that it's the ideal device for dragon staff heads, but like I said, it is the most common one and it works for most people. So another very important part of your dragon staff is the grip, as a lot of dragon staffs, when you order them online, will not already have a grip on them. And when I ordered my first dragon staff and there was no grip on there, I was very disappointed because um, I love everything about dragon staff other than regripping a dragon staff to this day. So it's not a fun thing for me. But um, there are a lot of different grip options out there. You can check all of the major companies and they probably have their own grip. I have not tried nearly all of them. Um, I'm really picky with grips, so once I found ones that I really liked, I just stuck to those ones. So I'm just going to talk about a few different types of grips. Um, there is this white silicone grip that comes on the Ninja Pirate staffs already. I'm clearly biased. Uh, I love these grips. They are my favorite grip. Why are they my favorite grip? One, they are very grippy. And as long as you consistently wipe the staff down with a uh, rag and isoprol alcohol, it will stay very grippy. However, I live in California and we have nice weather most of the time. So I didn't know that this grip could be problematic until I took it to other states. I took it to Oregon at a fire festival and it was raining like crazy and this grip just became completely useless. Although if I had another type of grip on it, I guess that grip would have gotten soaked with water so I guess that might have ruined the grip as well. Maybe it's just not a great prop for the rain. Um, also though, I took this dragon staff to Tennessee and it was very humid, something I had never experienced before. And my sweat also made this grip completely useless. Um, in the middle, after spinning for a minute and a half, two minutes, I would use my shirt and just wipe the sweat off of it. And then within 30 seconds to a minute, it was completely slippery and useless again. So I guess in that case, I probably would have brought a staff with a grip on it. However, um, you can always put a grip over this silicone grip. So I obviously love this grip and depending on the weather, but if you are going somewhere where the weather may not be ideal for this grip, you can always put an over grip on it. Another reason why this is my favorite grip is you literally never have to replace it. Um, some of my other favorite grips like Wizard Grip from Wizard of Flow, uh, I find that it's the perfect grip and then after about two months of using it, it starts to lose its grippiness and then usually by five or six months, uh, for me, totally depends on how much you use it, I have to get new grip and re-grip it, which as I've mentioned, I can't stand doing. So this grip, you never have to re-grip as long as you take care of it. So the next grip I'll talk about is the one I already mentioned. It's my favorite grip outside of the white silicone grip, and that is Wizard Grip from Wizard of Flow. I think I have that on most of my other props that don't have the white silicone grip. It's very soft, it's very forgiving, very grippy, at least um, before you wear it out. And they offer it in different colors. They offer it in thick or thin. I like getting the thick one. It's very padded. Like I said, very forgiving, especially if you're learning the prop or trying new tricks and you're smacking yourself in the face, you're gonna want a nice grip like Wizard Grip. Another grip that I really like, although I've kind of shied away from putting it on my Dragon Staffs, is also offered by Wizard of Flow, and that's Goat Grip. I do have it on my Contact Sword. It is much thinner than the Wizard Grip, it is also less forgiving, um, definitely more likely to pull off some arm hairs and things. However, it might be more long lasting and even more grippy than the wizard grip. It's a lot closer to the silicone grip and also if you take care of this grip and wipe it down with isoprol alcohol, it stays grippy for a very long time. I just find that it's not as forgiving, so personally I just kind of go with the wizard grip or the silicone grip at this point. 
Another really common grip is EPDM. You can find this online just by looking up EPDM grip. Um, that is what I used a lot in the beginning. It's also very thick, um, pretty forgiving. I'd say it's more forgiving than the goat grip. It's thicker than the goat grip, but also is a little bit rough on the skin and hair if you have hair. So now that we've gone over a lot of the details regarding dragon staffs, I wanted to give my own little review for eight of the major dragon staff manufacturers around the world. And those are Dark Monk, Three Worlds, Home of Poi, Trick Concepts, Flobonacci, Ninja Pirate, Wizard of Flow, and Gora. First, I'll talk a little bit about what they offer, and then I will give a major pro and con for each of these dragon staffs. First up is Gora, who also offer these shuriken heads now. I got to try a Gora dragon staff at a flow festival, and from what I've heard, they were the first dragon staff manufacturers. I have no idea if that's true or not, that's just what I've heard. Um, I found that their dragon staffs were very smooth. They were slightly heavier than what I'm used to, but again, that's not a bad thing. That's all personal preference. Very smooth. They use a bolt-on head design, so all the wicks go into the ends, and then you push that end onto the staff, and then screw it on tight. They do offer both aluminum and carbon fiber staffs, and they offer both eight wick and 10 wick options being five wicks on each side or four wicks on each side. They also offer a pixie dragon, which is like a mini dragon staff, something I've never tried, but always wanted to. And as I mentioned, they now offer the shuriken heads that were originally made by paw print props. From what I can tell on their shop, Gora offers some different designs for the heads or spokes. So they do offer um, on their dragon staff with the wick on the end, it looks like it's the same type of setup here where you screw the spines or spokes directly into the staff. And then they also have the types of heads that you put the wicks into the little circular device, put the circular device onto the end of the staff and then tighten it. And it seems like they also have these uh, skinny bendy spines as well as thick more reinforced spines like this and they do also offer these shuriken dragon staff heads these are possibly the most lightweight daytime or non-fire dragon staff heads i've used they weigh about 250 grams or half a pound per head so the fact that the staff was a slightly heavier than I'm used to, I'm sure that these lighter dragon staff heads would probably counteract that. And when I say heavier than I'm used to, I'm literally talking about grams because a lot of staffs are either a little less than a pound or a pound or a little bit more than a pound. So it's not adding pounds of weight by any means. So my major pros for Gora are the fact that they have fire heads and daytime heads, as well as different options for the spines and the way to attach them. My only con would be these thin screw-in bendy spines because as you can tell, I'm just not a fan of them. Next up, we have Trick Concepts, whose dragon staffs I have only used at festivals and fire jams, so I throw that in because I find that I don't have as much experience as if as if I had owned one, but I have had some experience with them. From what I found, they're a little bit heavier than most props. Online it says their staves are anywhere from 40 ounces to 44 ounces, somewhere like two and a half to 2.75 pounds. So that is a little bit heavy, and that is because they only offer aluminum dragon staffs, at least from what I can tell on their website. So aluminum is going to be a bit heavier than carbon fiber, which is what a lot of manufacturers are using now. They do offer both types of fire spokes or spines. So they have the bendy ones like this, and then they also have the reinforced solid ones like this. 
And it also looks like they have a similar contraption where you can put the wicks into the circular device, push the circular device onto your staff and tighten it. And they also have the eight wick or 10 wick options being four wicks on each side or five wicks on each side. And they also offer some really pretty looking LED heads. So my pros for trick concepts are going to be their LED heads. They look really nice as well as the fact that they offer the solid reinforced aluminum like this for their spines in addition to the little bendy ones. My main con for them is going to be that they only offer aluminum staffs at this time. Next up, we're gonna talk about Dark Monk. Dark Monk offers maybe the most different kinds of fire dragon staffs that I've seen online. They offer the three wicks on each side. Ooh. They offer the four wicks on each side. They also offer five wicks on each side and not the one in the center, but instead five wicks going around. They also offer uh, six wicks on each side for their Helio Dragon Staff. Um, it's a bit of a different type of Dragon Staff head setup. Instead of the spokes going around in a perfect circle around the staff, oops, they are staggered, so it kind of makes a spirally effect when you're spinning it, which can look really cool from specific angles. They also offer the mini pixie dragon staff. They offer an extra long partner dragon staff. If you're interested in trying partner dragon staff, you are going to want a bigger staff so that both of you can be spinning it without having the head so close to you. And they also offer an LED option. I've only tried spinning Dark Monk Dragon Staffs a couple of times at Fire Jams, but um, from what I've seen on their pictures, and if I'm remembering correctly, they are twist-in um, spines like these ones. And I don't know, maybe I just can't tell from the picture and I wasn't paying attention. Maybe they lock in or magnet in somehow, but um, it is a similar setup where they won't be on a device that goes onto the staff. They're going to go straight into the staff. Dark Monk offers aluminum and carbon fiber staffs, and they also offer a collapsible staff, which I believe is aluminum only. If you are not familiar with that, this is a collapsible staff. So you can see, you put it all together, you can tighten them, which I'm not gonna do all that. And then, especially if you're traveling with it or just like to take it out and about to the park or hiking or whatever, you can take it apart into three pieces and then it'll easily fit into a bag or backpack. My main pro for Dark Monk is that they have so many options for different types of fire dragon staff heads and different sizes of dragon staffs. My main con is going to be the way that these spines go straight into the staff. And I'll be honest, they look online like they are sturdier than these cable spines, but nonetheless, I prefer the reinforced spines at this point. Next, we're gonna talk about Flobonacci. Unfortunately, I don't have nearly as much experience spinning their products as I'd like. I only got to try a Flobonacci original design dragon staff at a flow event that I went to. There was a booth that was selling them, and it is definitely one of the smoothest um, dragon staffs I've ever spun. I would say it's probably my favorite non-fire dragon staff heads other than these spiral heads, which as I mentioned are discontinued anyways. Um, I did not try their circular design. I already talked about that. Um, but I tried their original design, which looks beautiful while it's moving and um, feels really nice while it's moving as well. Their staffs appear to have a lock-in system with um, like a screw or Allen wrench design. Although it seems like instead of tightening it from the sides, it seems like it tightens in more at the top of the staff, which I am not too familiar with. Maybe that works better. Um, one thing about Flobonacci is they seem very dedicated to Dragon Staff specifically. So I'm going to trust their design on that one and assume it probably works better than some of these other ones that I've had bad experiences with. 
They offer carbon fiber staves and they also offer pre-gripped staves that are pre-gripped with goat grip that I talked about earlier, which is definitely in my top three favorite grips. And as someone who can't stand gripping dragon staff or if you're new to dragon staff and don't know how to grip a staff, that is also a very valuable option to have. My main pro for Flobonacci is the fact that they are such a dragon staff focused company. I have a lot of love for that and a lot of faith in them for that. My main con for them is that they don't offer any fire dragon staff heads and I would love to see their original design on fire. Next we'll talk about Wizard of Flow. When I was first um, getting more familiar with Dragon Staffs, before I went with Ninja Pirate, I was really between getting a Wizard of Flow or a Ninja Pirate Dragon Staff. I've gotten to try a lot of Wizard of Flow Dragon Staffs at festivals and fire jams. They're very smooth, um, as I already talked about with the grips. They make my favorite grips, Wizard Grip and Goat Grip, at least outside of the silicone grip. And they also use that um, Allen Wrench lock-in design. I believe they offer six wick and eight wick options that are provided through Gora, if I'm not mistaken. And they also offer the Flobonacci heads that I was talking about earlier. They offer carbon fiber staves, which are very light. I believe like 450 grams or about a pound, give or take. My main pros for Wizard of Flow are, of course, they have my favorite grip. And also, it just felt very smooth for a fire dragon staff while I was spinning it. My main con is going to be those screw-on hubs at the ends. I have not owned one of their staffs to know if it will go out on you, but I've just had some bad experiences with those designs. Next, we're going to talk about Home of Poi. And I got love for anyone who makes dragon staffs, so I'm not trying to speak too negatively um i did own a home of poi staff and i think it's the only dragon staff that i got rid of so that 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 tells you something um they make a lot of different props which might be part of the problem here uh they do offer some different uh amounts of wicks i think they offer eight wicks or ten wicks they also only seem to offer aluminum staves, which are going to be a bit heavy. And then they have the design where the wicks pop into the circular ends. You Allen wrench the circular ends onto the staff, which I definitely had problems with theirs. I had to tighten it, like I said before, every burn or every time I spun it. And uh, also the grip that it came with, I, I used it for two seconds before I knew I was going to take it off and put on some wizard grip. Uh, it is one of the cheaper Fire Dragon Staff options on the market, which is why it was actually uh, one of the first staffs that I got. But after about a year and a half, it was starting to fall apart on me. So I passed it on to a young dragon at a fire jam who did not have a dragon staff. So my main pro for Home of Poi is that it is well priced for a fire dragon staff, especially if you are uncertain about the prop or if you're going to like it. Of course, a cheaper option is always nice. My cons for Home of Poi's dragon staff is going to be uh, A, there was a bit of a rattle when you spun it. B, it just seemed to be not made with the highest quality of materials and see it fell apart on me in less than two years, which I'll be honest, I put some dragon staffs through some abuse, lots of kicks, lots of tosses, lots of drops. So um, maybe if I was playing it safe, it would have lasted a lot longer. I'll, I'll stick with that narrative. Next up is Three Worlds. I have not only got to try many of their staffs at festivals and fire jams, that is also where my collapsible dragon staff was from. I'll be honest with you, it broke, but I do not blame them for that. This was a great design and a great collapsible dragon staff. It was probably my most used dragon staff and it lasted me over five years. Like I've mentioned, I put these dragon staffs through a lot of abuse and this one in particular one time, I went hiking, I had it in my backpack with the spiral heads uh, strapped onto the backpack. I started doing a little bit of a, I guess you could say rock climbing and it started to get a little sketchy. 
So I unhooked my backpack and dropped it off of a cliff with these in it and they still worked great for another year or so after that. So um, they do also offer like replacement pieces. Like I can just get this center part replaced and then it's all back to new. So although this staff broke on me, I do not blame them for that. They make high quality products. They also make both aluminum and carbon fiber solid staffs and breakdown staffs. From what I'm seeing on their website, their staves are about 445 to 499 grams. Um, so that's either just under a pound or just over a pound. They also offer six wick, eight wick, and 10 wick fire dragon staff heads. And they offer the spiral claws that are similar to this setup that I have here and they have a really nice LED option. So I'd say them and Dark Monk probably have the most um, versatile and wide range of options as far as Dragon Staff heads go. And they also offer a pre-gripped staff with EPDM, which I had mentioned earlier. It was definitely uh, one of my go-to grips in the beginning, and it was definitely cheaper than uh, some of the other grips that I get now. My main pros for Three Worlds are the fact that they offer the collapsible, the solid, and aluminum, and carbon fiber, and they offer pre-grip staffs. And then they also offer fire practice heads and LED heads. And from the research I've done, I think they're the only Dragon Staff manufacturers that offer fire, daytime practice heads and LED heads. Usually a lot of the companies have one of the three or two of the three, but all three is definitely rare. My main con for them is going to be the screw on hubs at the ends of the staves. As you can tell, they are definitely the most common design. I personally am just not crazy about them. And last, but certainly not least, Ninja Pirate. So if you can't tell, these are my favorite dragon staffs, and like I said, I'm not sponsored by them or affiliated with them. Just as someone who is obsessed with dragon staffs, I found that they made the perfect fire dragon staff design. Their staffs are carbon fiber, weighing in it just about under a pound, give or take, depending on the size, and I think that's going to be not including the heads on top. I believe the three wick ends are just under a pound and the four wick ends are just over a pound. These are both from Ninja Pirate. As I mentioned, they are my favorite. Why are they my favorite? I'm glad you asked, I will tell you. So these ends here, they're the only company that I'm aware of that have this contraption. Hopefully you can see here where you can pop the heads of the staff on and off with this little metal circle here. You can see there's a little hole in the staff. Simply push the head onto the staff, press that little button in, and then it's gonna pop up through the hole, like so. And then you don't have to worry about retightening it before every performance. Um, you don't gotta worry about it getting stripped. It's on there, it's solid, and it is by far the best Dragon Staff fire head design that I have found. Um, also, another thing that I absolutely love about Ninja Pirate is this white silicone grip, which I already talked about. Um, they offer them already pre-gripped on these staves, and then they also offer over grips that you can put over this grip, because like I said, in certain weather conditions, it might not be ideal. But for me, it is basically the perfect fire dragon staff. And if I didn't already mention, they offer the six wicks, the eight wicks, and they also offer LED ends as well. And if you are paying attention to the width size of your dragon staff, you might be able to get other heads that pop on them, like I was able to put these raised in flames heads on uh, the Ninja Pirate staff. And my main pros for Ninja Pirate are, of course, going to be the lock-in heads. In my opinion, they are the perfect um, design for Dragon Staff heads. And, of course, the white silicone grip. I love it. I gotta give them a con, so I'm gonna give them a con here. Um, as you may or may not be able to tell with this Ninja Pirate staff, if I start the roll, you'll see it give a little bit. 
that is something that happened because I lost these little rubber ends that go in between the uh, head and the staff. So I'll try to uh, show you here. Oh, this works perfect. So you can see um, this is like a little rubber piece that will stop that from happening and it'll just put a little bit of padding between the head of the staff and the shaft. So um, with this first Ninja Pirate staff that I got, I lost those rubber pieces. I didn't realize how important they were. So it does have that little bit of give, but as soon as you get the staff rolling, you don't notice it anymore. Um, I don't even think it happens anymore because of the momentum. It's just that first little push that it has a little bit of give. But as long as you don't lose those rubber pieces, that is not even a thing. And I'm pretty sure I could contact them and get some of those rubber pieces and fix that anyways. So there you have a complete Dragon Staff Buyer's Guide. Um, this type of video did not exist when I was looking into Dragon Staffs, and as far as I know, one does not exist anywhere on the internet today, surprisingly, because it's probably one of the most common questions that I get about Dragon Staffs is, which Dragon Staff should I get? What kind of grip should I use? How tall should the Dragon Staff be? All of those things. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Hopefully it was informative to you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop me a comment or shoot me a message. Thank you all so much for watching.